The righteous will never be removed, but the wicked will not inhabit the earth. The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue will be cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked what is perverse. My name's Arthur. Thank you for joining me as we meditate and share together in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 30. On the face of it, this sounds like an outrageous statement. The righteous will never be removed, but the wicked will not inhabit the earth. We find that the earth is full of wicked people, by whatever definition of wickedness you might choose to use. And we find that the righteous have always been persecuted and killed. As other scriptures say, For your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. So how can Solomon say the righteous will never be removed, but the wicked will not inhabit the earth? Well, it's a future statement. The righteous will never be removed. They are attacked their bodies are killed, but they will never be removed out of God's kingdom. For Jesus has risen from the dead and defeated death. This is the only logical conclusion that we can make from it. And the idea of resurrection in the future, Paul tells us, was held by Abraham, who believed that if he killed Isaac, God would bring him back alive again. And so whatever is done to the righteous, they can never be destroyed. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Jesus himself said, Upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So again, a declaration of the fact that his church, the assembly of people who believe in Jesus, will come out in the end victorious. But the other side of this was that the wicked will not inhabit the earth. Well, the wicked fight very hard to take control of the earth. They use intimidation, they use force, they use violence, they use economics. They seek to have power over people for that very purpose of taking control of the earth. And yet they must die. It is appointed unto men once to die. And that death that happens to the righteous also happens to the unrighteous. What is interesting, going back to Abraham, is that when he died, it is said, and he was gathered with his people. In other words, yes, his body had died. It was placed in the burial cave. But he had not died. And the Lord Jesus affirms this in the New Testament. Abraham saw my day. The Sadducee said, You're not 30 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Before Abraham was, I am, Jesus said. There's a whole dimension which is beyond this three-dimensional physical world that we see with our natural eyes. Now, we know that there are things that we cannot see with our eyes. You cannot see bacteria. Well, unless you do something very special and magnify them very greatly. There are stars in the heavens which we cannot see because they are so far away. And there's things not so far away but are small that we cannot see. So we cannot see everything. But beyond this physical world is a spiritual world. We are reminded of when the king of Syria was getting frustrated because Elisha was telling the king of Israel the battle plans that the king of Syria had. The king of Syria said to his men, Who's betraying me? Where's the leaks coming from? And he was told, There's no one betraying you here. It's just that the prophet in Israel, Elisha, can tell the king of Israel what you're doing in your bedroom. God knows, God can see, and God was informing his servant Elisha, who was informing the king of Israel. Well, the king of Syria said, well, go and catch him. And so they came to the city where Elisha was. 
and surrounded the city. And when Elisha's servant got up in the morning, he saw all the soldiers, and he said, Alas, we're dead men. But no, Elisha said to him, Lord, open his eyes. And when he opened his eyes, there around Elisha was a, a whole army of gods, angels, fiery chariots. And Elisha was able to lead the Syrian soldiers to Samaria. And there the king of Israel was instructed to feed them and send them home in peace. And so we have God's action to the wicked was to give them a feed and send them home. But the point is that there's a whole dimension which we are not normally aware of. That's the spiritual realm in which God dwells, where the angels normally dwell. And only very rarely do we have glimpses of that realm. But according to the scriptures, it is very real and very present. And so, when a person dies, they do not cease to exist, as many are told today, but they continue to exist as spirit beings, either in a place of remand, because they are the wicked, or in paradise, because they are the righteous. And we are told that the righteous will never be removed. God will save the righteous. And who is the righteous? Well, in the New Testament, it is the one who believes in Jesus. For he was made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. It's an imputed righteousness. It's not that I in my actions have been without sin. It's not by works of righteousness that we have done that we are saved. It's by his mercy that we are saved, because we all fall short. So what's the distinction between the righteous and the wicked? Well, the wicked is the person who disobeys the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when the Christians in Thessalonica were being persecuted, and it applies to all Christians who have been persecuted through the centuries, many, many, many thousands of them, Paul says, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God, and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe, because our testimony among you was believed. So there's a future day when Jesus comes back and he will separate the righteous from the wicked and the righteous will be at peace, seeing the vengeance that God takes on those who disobey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the judgment. They do not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that gospel is very simple. Jesus died for our sins, so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so the righteous will never be removed because God has imputed righteousness to them. They have obeyed the gospel. They have chosen to seek God. They seek to live a righteous life, because God has put his spirit in their hearts. But the wicked will not inhabit the earth. The wicked is the person who says, there's no God. He's a fool. He doesn't take God into account. He thinks that all that there is, is what this world has the things of this world, and so he fights to obtain the things of this world, not realising that all these things shall be destroyed. And so, if you gain the whole world and lose your soul, what do you have? Because the world that you gain will be destroyed. The righteous will never be removed, but the wicked will not inhabit the earth. As the Lord taught us to pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The wicked will not inhabit the earth. As Jesus taught us to pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In that day when Jesus reigns and his will is done on earth, those who have chosen not to do his will in a deliberate and willful way will be excluded from that kingdom. They have no place there. But he says to the righteous, enter into the kingdom prepared for you before the foundation of the world.